Hello, my furniture friends. Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott. I grabbed up these two little end tables, accent tables, plant stands from the thrift store a little while ago, and they've kind of just been sitting off to the side because I didn't really have any inspiration for them. I have no idea what's going on under all of this white paint, and they've both got a pretty good wiggle to them, so I think I'm just gonna dig right in and see where I end up. I thought these were really sweet when I saw them sitting in the furniture pile at Value Village and they seemed like they could make really cute bedside tables or end tables beside a couch or just be that little table that gets moved all around the house to wherever it's needed in the moment. They're not a perfect match, think sisters, not twins. It looks to me like someone had the larger one and then built their own replica to create a pair, but I'm hoping that I can remove this white paint and hopefully fix the construction a little bit to sturdy them up. To get rid of this paint, I could have used a chemical stripping product, but I didn't really feel like dealing with all that goopy mess, or I could have scraped it off with my carbide scraper, but these are so wobbly and with all of the little pieces, it seemed like it would be hard to get the good downwards pressure on the scraper for that to be effective. So I decided I'd have a go at just sanding through it. I gave them a wipe down with some TSP and warm water to get some of the grime off of the surface first though. It's kind of just habit at this point for me to start with a wash. It looks like the larger table is nailed together. And then the smaller table is all glued and screwed. I think I'm gonna disassemble these um, just to make sanding all of the individual pieces easier. And then we'll try and reassemble them in a manner that's a little more sturdy. Fun fact, these square shaped screws are called Robertson screws and they're a Canadian invention. A lot of my followers down in the US ask about these so I thought I'd fill you in. They're pretty common here, especially in furniture. Just removing all of the screws on this table let it come apart really easily, but the trim pieces on this one are glued on. So I used my heat gun to warm up the seams and soften that glue a bit, and then carefully pried them up with my painter's tool and a little bit of help from my hammer. The trim on the second table was nailed on, so I used my painter's tool again to pry those up and then just sort of pried and pulled the legs away from the bottom shelf. The legs on this one are held into the top with dowels, so I wanted to be careful not to damage those at all. I was prepared to have to use my heat gun again, but luckily they popped right out with just a few little twists and tugs. Since I had all these little pieces to deal with, I went with my small detail sander and some coarse 80 grit sandpaper to start grinding off the paint. 
It didn't take long at all to bust through that thick white and find some decent looking pine. It's important when you're sanding anything, but especially if you're strip sanding paint or a thick varnish, you wanna pay attention to your sandpaper and make sure that you're changing it out as soon as it starts to get clogged up with the finish. This isn't the time to be cheap or conservative with materials because if the sandpaper is all covered in that buildup, it's not helping you. It's just rubbing the paint across the wood and not removing it like it should be. It can also lead to more of those obnoxious little sanding swirls showing up in your wood. It took me about 45 minutes in total to get all of the paint off of the first table. And by then my hands were starting to go numb. So I took a break for lunch and to go run some errands before I came back for round two. Okay, I think I'm ready to get back to sanding. I wasn't 100% sure what kind of wood this other table was made of. It was pretty soft like the pine, but definitely more of a red tone and had kind of an oak or elm grain to it. There are a lot of small independent lumber mills around me here that process hemlock trees, so it might just be some local New Brunswick hemlock wood. I ended up grabbing my five inch orbital sander for a bit, hoping that the larger surface area would make this job go a little bit quicker, but it did end up taking me about the same 45 minutes to get this one stripped as well. Two naked tables, but I was nowhere near finished with sanding. The 80 grit paper will leave your wood feeling quite rough and kind of fuzzy. So I needed to go back over every piece now with some slightly finer 120 grit and then finally some 180 grit to gradually smooth out the surfaces and close down the grain. I put an old towel down on my workbench too so that I wasn't scratching up one side while trying to smooth out the other. These are both pretty soft woods and they'll dent or scratch really easily so they're best suited for a more rustic finish anyways but I don't want to be causing more damage than I need to. I worked my way around both tables with the finer grits smoothing things out and also trying to buff out any swirls that the 80 grit might have left during the strip sanding and then I had to figure out how I wanted to put these back together. I went to my drawer of dollar store craft dowels and took a look at the options that I had and ultimately decided to use these quarter inch round dowels. On the table that had the screws through the top, I wanted to do the same thing, but replace it with wood instead. I didn't have a quarter inch drill bit to make those holes though, so I took a trip out to Doug, my husband's garage, and borrowed one of his. I propped the tabletop up on some blocks so that I could drill straight down through it. And I just centered my drill bit on the screw holes that were already there. And then I did the exact same thing on each of the legs. I hammered those dowels down through the top so they stuck out the other side a bit. And then after making sure everything was fitting together okay, I added a little bit of wood glue and placed each one. I didn't realize I wasn't recording, but I did the exact same thing to support this center shelf too. I drilled straight through the legs where the screws had been and then the corresponding hole into the edge of the shelf and hammered the dowels through with a little bit of glue, but the joints were so tight that I couldn't get it all to come together the way I needed it to. So I added one of my big clamps to one side and used that just to pull the legs nice and tight.
On the other table, I did pretty much the exact same thing. I drilled straight through the legs where the original nails were and then created a little pocket in the shelf as well. I added some wood glue and a tiny bit of sawdust into the holes to hold those original dowels nice and tightly on the top. And once I had them in place, I hammered the new dowels through the legs and the shelf. While the glue was curing up, I went ahead and nailed the trim pieces back on just using the old holes as a guide for placement. And I also nailed the ones on the other table on instead of re-gluing those. Once the glue was dry, I needed to trim off the excess dowels, so I grabbed my Dremel oscillating tool with a mini flush cut blade to get as close as I could and then used the sander to clean up the rest. There were a couple of old nail holes on this top beside where the screws had been. So I filled those in with some natural colored wood filler and then sanded that smooth. And these tables were ready to finish. I decided to use this stain and finishing oil from Fusion in the color Driftwood. This is a blend of tongue and linseed oils with some pigment in it that's going to soak down into the wood and then cure to a hard, durable, water resistant finish all in one step. It's super easy to use too. I gave the can a good mix and then brushed the stain all over both tables. And don't freak out, it's not nearly this pigmented or opaque once it's done. You need to let this stuff absorb into the wood for about 15 minutes and then you just wipe off all of the excess with a lint-free rag. You can apply more coats if you want more color or more of a sheen, but one coat is more than enough for good protection. Unfortunately, when I wiped back the pine tabletop, I had some really bad swirl marks. I think this was from my last once over with the sander after I trimmed those dowels. Oh, so frustrating. This oil does take about nine to 12 hours to cure. So I left these overnight and then the next morning, guess what? More sanding. Second time's the charm, right? <laughs> Now remember, these are two completely different kinds of woods, so any transparent finish you use is going to look different no matter what. But again, these tables are sisters, not twins, and I'm totally okay with that. The wiggle is gone, the gloopy white paint is gone, although I think these would be just as cute painted up too, but they're way better off than they were when I found them. And now all I need to do is find them a new home. I think they're a really versatile style too. 
Thank you so much for supporting my small business by watching today. I hope you found this makeover informational and inspirational and you're itching to get started on your own flipping project now. I'll leave some more makeovers here if you want to keep watching and please make sure that you're subscribed for tons more just like this. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I will catch you all next time.